Chapter number six. Please help me make welcome your neighbor to church. Third person, good evening. Welcome to service. Welcome the other person. Ask the person how was your day. Did you have a good day? Second Kings, chapter number six. Verse number 24. And it came to pass after this that Ben had that king of Syria gathered all his hosts and went up and besieged Samaria. And there was a great famine in Samaria and behold they besieged it until an ass head was sold for four score pieces of silver and the fourth part of a cab of dove's dung for five pieces of silver. Verse number 26, read together one to go. And as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall, there cried the woman unto him, saying, Help my lord, O king. 27, read together. And he said, If the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? Out of the barn floor or out of the wine press. Go ahead. And the king said unto her, What ailed thee? And she answered, This woman said unto me, Give thy son that we may eat him today, and we will eat my son. What? Tomorrow. So we boiled my son and did eat him. And I said unto her on the next day, Give thy son that we may eat him. And she, what? Had hid her son. And it came to pass when the king heard the words of the woman that he rent his clothes. And he passed by upon the wall. And, he, and the people looked and behold, he, has, he had sackcloth within his flesh. Verse 31, let's read together one to go. And he said, God do so and more also to me if the head of Elisha, the son of Shaphat, shall stand on him this day. Go ahead. But Elisha sat what? Where? In his house. And the elders were sitting with him. And the king sent a man ahead of him. But before the messenger came to him, he said to the elders, Do you see how this son of a murderer has sent someone to take away my head? Look, when the messenger comes, shut the door and hold him fast at the door. Is not the sound of his master's feet behind him? 33, read together. And while he was still talking with them, there was the messenger coming down to him. And then the king said, Surely this calamity is from the Lord. Why should I wait for the Lord any longer? 
chapter 7. Read together one to go. Then Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow, about this time, a seer of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seers of barley for a shekel at the gates of Samaria. Verse number two, read together. So an officer on whose hand the king leaned and sat the man of God and said, Look, if the Lord will make windows in heaven, could this thing be? And he said, In fact, you shall see it with your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Look at this. Look at verse number 16. Then the people went out and plundered the tents of the Syrians. So a seer of what? Fine flour was what? Sold for a shekel. And two seers of barley for a shekel. According to the word of the Lord. So a seer of fine flour was sold for a shekel and two seers of barley for a shekel according to the word of the Lord. Look at Jeremiah chapter number 29. Come on, say, I believe the word of God. Say it again. Say, I believe the word of God. Say, as the final authority over my life. Say, I am what the word of God says I am. Say, I can do what the word of God says I can do. Say, I can have what the word of God says I can have. Say, I can achieve what the word of God says I will achieve. Say, I will go where the word of God says I will go. Look at this. Jeremiah 29 verse number 11. He said, for I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not what? Of evil to give you what? A future and a hope. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare the reality of Jeremiah 29 verse 11 over the life of everybody under the sound of my voice. Both online and seated here, I declare in the name of Jesus that peace happens around you. Amen. He said, thought of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. When God says he will give you a future and a hope, he's, he, what he means is that he will give you what you hope for. Is somebody following what I'm saying? When he says, I will give you a future and a hope, it means that God plans to give you what you hope for. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I don't know what you are hoping for right now. I declare by this time tomorrow, let that expectation reach your household. He said to give you a future and a hope. That means God is committed to giving you what you hope for. The Bible said faith is the substance of things. What? Hoped for. 
the evidence of things not seen. So God wants to walk according to what you are hoping for. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the same way we are hoping for renewed Nigeria, I prophesy that God brings our hope to pass. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, I know the thought that I think towards you. Thought of good and not of evil. Touch yourself. Say, God is not thinking evil for me. Say it again. Say, God is not thinking evil for me. Now listen, this mentality is important so that you understand when the devil is walking. Are you with me right now? And then you also understand when to challenge the devil. Because if the devil succeeds in making you believe that the evil is from God, you will not challenge it. Are you following me now? But when you know that every good and perfect gift comes from the Lord, in whom there is no shadow of turning nor variableness, it will help you confront the ones that are not good. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that God brings to you what you hope for. Touch yourself, say, I have hope. Uh, look at your neighbor, ask your neighbor, do you have hope? Ask your neighbor, what do you hope for? Ask your neighbor, what do you hope will happen tomorrow? When the Bible talks about tomorrow, every future is captured in the word tomorrow. Is somebody following me? That's why this service, we are calling it securing the future. Every future is captured in the word tomorrow. Are you with me right now? Once you hear about tomorrow, it is actually referring to the future. And then from the word of God, God has designed us in such a way that through the word of God, we can determine what happens in our lives. Are you with me right now? Through the word of God. Through the word of God, through the instrumentality of the word of God. We can decide the direction our life will go. Are you with me right now? Look at Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55. Verse number 11. Look at this. Let's start from verse number 8. He said, for my thoughts are not what? Your thoughts, nor what? Are your ways what? My ways, says the Lord. Read verse number 9 together, one to go. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, yes? So are my ways, what? Higher than your ways. And my thoughts, what? Than your thoughts. Read verse number 10 together, one to go. Okay, go ahead, verse number 11. He said, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing 
for which I sent it. Meaning that every word of God is on assignment. Every word of God is on assignment. I'm going to teach you something, I think, in March on the, 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 the efficacy of the word of God. The word of God has content. Somebody say content. Content. Are you with me right now? Content. He said, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Lift your hands in the name of Jesus. We send the word of God to your tomorrow. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by this time tomorrow, there shall be a heavy turnaround for good. He said, so shall the word be that goes forth from my mouth. So for every time the word of God goes forth, something is being targeted. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare that there is going to be a turnaround by tomorrow. Yeah. Every news that when you hear, you will smile. Every news that when you hear, you will shout for joy. Every news that when you will hear, the tears that will come out of your eyes will be tears of joy. I declare it a reality in your life. The Bible said that there was famine in Israel. The famine was so much, Israel was under siege. It became much that people were buying animal feces for money. They were exchanging pieces of silver for animal feces to eat. It was so bad that people formed a cooperative to eat their children. It was that bad. And the Bible said the people, one day, these women that entered in an agreement that they were going to, I mean, eat their children. The Bible said one of them brought hers and it was given, all other people shared. And it was another woman's turn for her own child to be given. But the Bible said she refused. It was when they were now arguing that the king of Israel was passing. And the lady, the woman was so excited because they were going to be talking to the king directly. The Bible said, when the woman asked the king, please help us, the king said, if the Lord does not help you, where will I find help from? I like the fact that kings recognizes that God can help. Because God can help us in this country, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, may you receive help from above. The king was saying, why talk to me when you can talk to God? Why talk to me when you can talk to God? The king recognized his helplessness. Church, are you with me right now? His helplessness. When we call on the name of the Lord, we are not in error. When we have miracle services like this, we are we depend completely on God. God, we are doing what is right. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare help from above for somebody here. Yeah. The Bible said they went to king for help and the king could not. The king could not. He said to them, why, why come here? Where will I get help from you? 
Why not talk to God? If God does not help, where am I going to find help from? Is it from the threshing floor or from the wine press? And then guess what? The next thing the king said was that Elisha was going to pay dearly for what was happening in the country. Meaning that the king recognized that prophetic declaration can bring a change in tomorrow. And in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, if you ask me what did you come with to this service, I will tell you I came with a word from the Lord. I declare by this time tomorrow, there's going to be a major turnaround. Come on, touch yourself. There is a word for my future. Say it again. Say there is a word for my future. The king said, anywhere you see Elisha, tell him I will remove his head. Meaning his mouth is no longer useful. How can he be in this country and he doesn't want to say something? Church, are you with me right? Now, he didn't say I will cut off his hand. He said I will remove his head. Since the man had refused to say something. And guess what? The Bible said when the messenger he sent was still on his way, Elisha already picked the signal. He was talking with some people. He said, I, I sense that the king is sending somebody here. And then the scripture said, when Elisha went out, he made the declaration. He said, by this time tomorrow. Tomorrow represents the future you are looking for. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I send a word into your tomorrow. Financially, health-wise, spiritually, business-wise, career-wise, let there be a turnaround for the better. He said, by this time tomorrow, shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. Listen, Elisha, by the word of his mouth, determined prizes. He said how it was going to be. The Bible said, and that's also what happens in a service like this, where maybe somebody that may bump on the uh, clip tomorrow. The person will just be wondering, what are they saying amen to? Because most persons would have screamed amen. And then one man that felt he was well read, that understands statistics and analysis, came out and said, why in the world should the people be screaming amen? How in the world can this thing be? How can somebody with his mouth say what will happen tomorrow? And even to the point of saying the prices. We know exactly that things are bad, things are biting, and this man has to say this. He said, even if the Lord should make windows, I've told you before, if the man had made his analysis and removed God, it would have been understood. The man tried to reduce God to the level of human senses. He said, even if the Lord should make windows, that was one of the greatest offense that that man committed. If the man had just said, in my opinion, and he removed God, it would have been a different ballgame. And brothers and sisters, if God had opened the windows of heaven, the man would say, anyway, I actually said, unless he opens the windows of heaven. God did not open the windows of heaven. God had to come down on earth and use some materials that people would never expect to show that he is God Almighty. The declaration I am making, help is going to come from where you are not expecting. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, some things that were not in the plan, but it will favor you. They are coming your way in the name of Jesus. Come and declare by this time tomorrow. 
touch yourself, say by this time tomorrow, this time. say there will be a major turnaround. Hear me. Life will respond to the words coming from your mouth. Is somebody following what I'm saying? That word coming from your mouth has capacity to produce. The man said, if the Lord should make windows from heaven, how in the world would this happen? Elisha now made the declaration again. He says, sir, listen. Because of this thing you said now, you will see this thing I said, but you will not enjoy it. But in your case, you will not only see it, you will help give others what you are receiving today. Come on, say by this time tomorrow. Oh, say it again. Say by this time tomorrow. Say there's going to be a major turnaround. Hear me. It was just words that Elisha spoke. Is somebody following what I'm saying? It was just words. Let me show you John. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. John chapter 4. You are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by You don't need a man to be the God you are. Ashata, Brego da la Sata, Manda Lego Sata, Manda la Raba Ke Sosha, Brega la Sata, Brega da. You got signs and seasons in your
talk to God. They went to the king for help. The king said, I am waiting for God. Brothers and sisters, when we are in the presence of God, there is always help made available. Is somebody following what I'm saying? There is no place at times that we can be so guaranteed of the future like in his presence. Are you with me right now? Every time the word of God is released, even when you are not seeing it, something is happening somewhere. Are you with me right now? That's why you need to be taught how the word of God works. So that your faith in the word will increase. And you know, blessed is he that believes for there shall be what? Performance. So when your faith increases, the level of performance also increases. Look at John chapter 4. Let me show you. In verse number 46. So Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee. Where he made the water wine. And there was a certain what? Noble man whose son was what? Sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son. For he was what? At the point of death. This very noble man went to Jesus. You know, it's so surprising how we have faith in noble men. And the noble men you are having faith in, have faith in the Jesus that we all believe. Are you with me right now? The noble man went to Jesus because his son was sick to the point of death. Look at this. Look at this. When he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, verse 47. He went to him and employed him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Verse 48, read together one to go. Then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will what? By no means what? Believe. The nobleman said to him, sir, come down before my child what? Dies. Jesus spoke to the noble man. He said, unless you just see signs and wonders, an immediate occurrence, you will not believe. The man said, sir, please come down and heal my son. Look at this. Verse 50, Jesus said to him, go your way. What happened? Your son, what? Lives. The word of God is the tool that produces miracle in this kingdom. Yes, Jesus said to the man, listen, go your way, your son lives. Look at this. <laughs> so the man what? I can't hear you. What happened? The man what? I can't hear you, church. The man what? I look at your neighbor, tell neighbor, do you believe the word? Listen, this is where the miracle is. Do you know that man in whom the king, the king leaned, he did not believe the word Elijah, Elisha said. And because he did not believe the word, he did not experience it. So the reason at times the word of God do not produce in some people's life is not because it's not powerful. But the word of God we need to mix with belief for there to be a performance. Are you with me right now? So if I am fixing your capacity to believe, I am actually preparing you for a miracle. 
Shake your neighbor, ask your neighbor, do you believe? Look at your neighbor, ask your neighbor, do you believe? So, when Elisha said, by this time tomorrow, somebody doubted it and said it's not possible. And guess what? That word came to pass, but he was not the one that experienced it because he did not come with the power of belief. Are you with me right now? No matter what is happening in Nigeria or around the word of God, around the world, the word of God has the final say. Is somebody following what I'm saying? By faith, we understand that the whole world was framed by the word of God, such that the things that do appear, we are not made of the things that appears. We understand that the sun is the product of the world. The star is the product of the world. The firmament is the product of the world. Iron is the product of the world. All of these things we are created by the world. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare concerning your finances, it will not go down. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that he that has started a good work in you, he will complete it. Yes. Say by this time tomorrow. Yes. Come on, say by this time tomorrow. Yes. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, by this time tomorrow, you will have a change of story. Yes. By this time tomorrow, there won't be any sickness around you. Yeah. By this time tomorrow, there shall be restorations. Yeah. By this time tomorrow, God is visiting you in a special way. Yeah. Look at this. When Elisha declared, one man said, I don't believe, it's not possible. And guess what? That word that was spoken came to pass in Israel, but did not come to pass in his life. This word I'm speaking right now will come to pass in somebody's life who believes this word. In the midst of scarcity of finances around Nigeria, God will open for you a well that does not run dry. <laughs> In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, just like it happened during COVID, there's going to be a release of finances like never before. I declare in the name of Jesus that the economy of heaven sponsors you this season. I declare in the name of Jesus that the economy of the kingdom sponsors you this season. So, somebody did not believe. And that word came to pass in every other person's life except his own life. Shake your neighbor, tell your neighbor, do you believe? Now, touch yourself, say, I believe specially. Come on, say like me, say, I believe specially. Say, by this time tomorrow. There's going to be a turnaround in my life. Touch yourself, say, by this time tomorrow. There's going to be a turnaround in my life. Church, are you with me right now? So, when Jesus met the man, he said, I discovered that you people like signs and wonders. When you talk about signs and wonders, you're talking about what can be seen now. But Jesus said to the man, I want to bring you to another frequency where you know that the word of God can be working even when you are not seeing it now. Church, are you with me right now? That's why Jesus told them, he said, that generation seek after signs and wonders. Jesus wanted to go on the word dimension. You know, in signs and wonders, Jesus will follow the man to the house. And then he will meet where the child is laying. And then lay hands on the child and bring the child up. But Jesus said, you people like signs and wonders. But this time around, I don't intend going with you to your house to perform signs and wonders. I'm going to use word dimension. 
we are going to use word dimension tonight. And in the name of Jesus, I send that word to your business, to your career. Amen. Hear the word of the Lord. A resurrection is happening. Amen. I command recommendations. Amen. I command restorations. Amen. I declare that your salary goes up times seven. Amen. Look at this. Jesus said, you like signs and wonders, but there's a dimension I want to use. In signs and wonders, I like, I'll come into your house. But this time around, I'm going to use the word. And so he started using the word. He, he told the man, he said, listen, I'm going to give you the word that suits your situation. He said, your son lives. Jesus did not say your son prospers because at that point is not prosperity. What they were talking about was the life of that boy because the Bible said he was sick to death. Church, are you with me right now? He was sick to death. You know, when we are in church like this and we are releasing this word, you know, things happen that you will not even know what's happening. Are you with me right now? But I want you to know for sure, lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, I speak this word to your tomorrow. A miracle is waiting for you tomorrow. Come on, shout miracle in my future. Come on, say like me, say miracle in my future. Listen. You can't face a future that has miracle with fear. Is somebody following what I'm saying? You cannot face it with fear at all. So Jesus said, you will seek after sign. But look at what I'm telling you. I'm going to use the word dimension. And guess the word dimension. He said, your son lives. Look at that. Is it verse 50? Jesus said to him, what? Go your way. What happened? Your son lives. Read the other part. What did the man do? So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. And what happened? And he went his way. The man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, any confusion around your life now, any form of inconveniences, any concern, I speak a word right now that it receives a divine intervention. Do you believe the word that you are saying amen to? Church, are you with me right now? Yeah. Look at this. The word that was spoken, that was what brought about the turnaround. When words are spoken in power, when you are here, you may not see the result. But where that word was sent to, something has happened. Are you with me right now? Yeah. Were you not the one that was sharing a testimony with me? Come. He was the one sharing a testimony with me. And you said you had a problem where the leg, uh, describe what, what was happening. Can walk. He's, he, he, he cannot. Walk from here to he said he couldn't walk. In fact, the day somebody was inviting him to church, that I can't come he, said, he said he can't come because of it. He said he was sitting at a junction, is he not, waiting for a car when the person met him. And he couldn't walk. And then he went to hospital. What did they say? They say I have stroke. I, I don't know what they call it. There's, I take um, this X-ray. He did X-ray. And they called all manner of names or to no avail. In fact, he was telling the person, if I come to church, I will not be able to participate. That was during a Mordecai, Mordecai, yeah. Mordecai revolution when we had that convention. And then, 
why the world was going on without even a special acrobatic on him. He noticed that at the end of the program, that situation in the leg was gone completely. Listen, completely. Listen, I, I'm, I'm trying to tell you the efficacy of God's word. Your bank account will hear it. Listen, listen. I mean, he said it was after the program that he started asking himself, what has happened? What has happened? And he noticed he was free moving. He, he came to just attend the program, but from what he saw, he became a member. Mordecai's revolution is not two years ago. Two years down the line, that bastard devil has not showed up again. Listen, I'm telling you the efficacy. When the word is spoken in power, something happens somewhere. And we are addressing the future. Never will it be said of you that you got frustrated. Amen. Can I say that? Come on, say something is happening in my tomorrow. Shake your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, do you believe? Touch yourself. Say, I believe. Touch yourself. Say, I believe. Listen. That word that Jesus spoke concerning that man's son. If the scripture recorded that the man did not believe, that word will fall on the ground and it will not produce. The reason at times prophetic declarations don't come to pass is not that there is no power in the word because every man that is used by God understands the frequency needed for God to do what he wants to do. And when you are in that frequency as a man of God, just like I know tonight, then the next thing should be for the people to understand. Are you with me right now? And respond by faith. So the man believed the word. Look at what happened. Verse number 51. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, what happened? What did Jesus say to the man? What did they say to him? Can it be a coincidence? So he said, your son lives. And then guess what? The people met him and say, your son lives. So if I say 11 million. <laughs> Do you understand? You get to this point, and then you see 11 million, because what was sown here? Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you with me right now? If I say congratulations here, then you come here and hear congratulations. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. Congratulations. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, I say congratulations. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I declare congratulations. Money you were not expecting is coming your way. I declare in the name of Jesus, concerning your future, everything is settled. So, can you see that what happened in 2 Kings chapter 7 is the same thing that happened in John chapter 4? In 2 Kings chapter 7, anybody that heard the declaration of Elisha can actually tell you that by tomorrow a measure of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel. And guess what? By that tomorrow, it was the exact price. The people that believed saw it. The one that did not believe saw it, but could not partake of it because of his unbelief. Every time a Christian is walking in unbelief, you are doing yourself a disfavor. Are you with me right now? 
every time you see a Christian walking in unbelief, if you are walking in unbelief, that's why the reason you are hearing the word and hearing the word is so that faith can be built in you. And it is that faith that is needed for whatsoever that is born of God, what? Overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. Are you with me right now? So what Jesus said here was what the man had there. So by your words, you can program tomorrow. Such that what you say here is what you say tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, it won't take time. Your people will start voting for you. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The Bible said the earnest expectations of the creatures waited for the manifestations of the sons of God. Through you, many people will go to school free of charge. Through you, many places will have good roads. Through you, some communities will experience their first light. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that your number shall be a great access to somebody. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They met the man. They said to him, look at this. Your son lives. So it means the man will be saying to himself, this looks like a deja vu. I've heard this before. This was the exact word. And remember that the people that met him to tell him about that, we are not with him when Jesus spoke to him. Are you following what I'm saying? They were not with him when Jesus spoke to him. They were not. It tells you the efficacy of the word. Every time you see the word, you can see the future. It was your son lives that was spoken yesterday that was ahead tomorrow. Just the same word spoken. I declare you are coming out of death. Everything that looks like death around you, you are coming out of in you from not enough to more than enough in the name of Jesus Christ of Christ. they met him and they said your son lives look at your neighbor tell your neighbor I have known what you will hear tomorrow tell your neighbor you will hear congratulations ah, look at your neighbor tell your neighbor I know what you will hear tomorrow you will hear that a lot has dropped 11 million, 100 million, 70 million, 120 million, 200 million, 2 billion, 10 trillion dollars, according to your faith. <laughs> Listen, what you see the devil fighting, pay attention very well. What you see the devil fighting in our generation is so that belief will reduce. The word has not been altered. It is belief that he's working on. Because when belief is reduced, the word can be there and it will just be there without producing results. The reason for a lot of debates and arguments in social media is so that belief will reduce. Are you with me right now? Some group of lepers went to Jesus asking him to heal them. Jesus asked them, do you believe I'm able to do this? Some group of blind men were crying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Almost the same thing that blind Bartimaeus cried out. Jesus turned to them and said, do you believe I'm able to do this? So it is not about the power of God to perform miracles. It's about the recipient faith to see that word work in your life. If the Bible said Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, it means what he's doing 
what he did yesterday, he's still doing today. Is somebody following what I'm saying? He's still doing today. It's a function of your belief. Function of your belief. You know, we're, we're, we're taking uh, Olifani's testimony. And then he brought out that place that he was talking about, the sister's scholarship. And immediately he quoted the scripture. He said, sir, the Bible said according to Luke chapter 4 verse 5 that Jesus, uh, uh, Peter said to Jesus, at thy word I will lay down the net. He said, just speak a word. And what was the word I spoke? Exactly this thing that you are celebrating now will become your exact testimony. And he said, amen. 2020. 2021. He got his own scholarship. Two days ago, he sent me a picture from China. I just arrived. Complete scholarship. No cover that he didn't pay any cover. Instead, they will be paying him on a monthly basis. What happened? Listen, when he was celebrating the sister's testimony, he said, sir, please, exactly, he, he said, Peter said, just speak a word. And then I told him, I said, this thing you are celebrating now, let it become your testimony. Exactly this. Look, look at, let me, let me tell you, that word that I spoke created a future. And then yesterday, he sent me a picture of a word that was released in 2020. I, I will see you in House of Reps. I will see you in CNET. Hey. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I prophesy over your life. Good news is coming your way. Congratulations is coming your way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Come on, say by this time tomorrow. Listen, listen. It is that faith that God is looking for. That faith. So the young man right now is in China, running fully on scholarship. And then accommodation free. And then receiving monthly tips. Because while he was celebrating the sister's testimony, he said something that Peter said, send the word. He said, send the word. So your belief, somebody can be highly anointed and the anointing does not work in your life because of unbelief. That's why the Bible said when Jesus went to his hometown, he could not perform great miracles. And he didn't turn to them and said, uh, what is wrong? Are you, sure my, are you sure the anointing is intact? No, sir. He did not. He knew the anointing was intact. But it was unbelief on the people's part. I know that the declarations are Bohosa, that are going on here has the ability to become the future that somebody is expecting. However, on your own part, do you have the recipient faith? Is somebody following what I'm saying? Because, you know, when, when the word of God is spoken like this, you know, Oli was telling me, he said, when he heard that word, he started applying for scholarships. He said, many of them turned him down when he started applying. But he said, when he remembered the word that has been spoken, he just said, one must accept. So, the word of God tells you the picture. So that you know the things to reject. Are you with me right now? The word of God paints a picture of this is what the future is. And then that picture will now make you say, no, this is not the declaration. That is not the declaration. That is not the declaration. You insist on the one that you know you said amen to.
Are you with me right now? So he said he would have gotten tired. However, when he remembered that there was a word that said exactly this thing that is your sister's testimony, that will be your own. He said that was it. And you know the funny thing is that a night before, I think two days before he will leave for China, a company in China started requesting for him to, uh, there's a uh, journal work he does, all of that. They were trying to employ him remotely. So why the company is paying him, the agency that gave him scholarship is also paying him. And he's working remotely. How did it happen? There was a word released. Church, are you with me right now? That word, that's why Jesus said to the man, listen, what I'm telling you right now, I know you put like signs and wonders, the one you can see now, but I want to use a dimension. I'm not going to come there to perform any drama. I'm going to send a word and drama will happen in your house. I declare in the name of Jesus, in your business, in your career, in your, in your, in your company, let the hand of the Lord rest upon you. Yeah. Every doctor's report that is contrary to the word of God, I make a declaration in the name of Jesus. Let God be through and let every man be a liar. Yeah. Let there be a complete healing right now. Yeah. Those of you that are watching online, I declare in the name of Jesus, the anointing does not have barriers. I declare, let there be miracles online right now. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So shall my word be that goeth forth. It shall not return to me until it has performed that which it is sent to. Are you with me right now? It will not return. We, we are saying by this time tomorrow, and we are saying securing the future. Church, are you with me right now? Securing the future. Madehash. Kedo Malahashta. Listen, look at this. Jesus don't, look at Give me that uh, John 4. Okay. That God's son could come from heaven and die to save a child like me. It is a thing most wonderful. Most wonderful to me that God's so son could come from heaven and die to save a child like me. I cannot tell how he could love a child so weak and full of sin. This love must be most wonderful if he could die like I cannot tell how he could love a child so weak and full of sin. This love must be most wonderful if he could die. My love to win. I got my sorrow the mercy when I go out he quested. I 
Do you know anybody called divine? Divine. She has problem here. Who? Your sister. Five broad. Go and pray there. Equal serene. Equal serene. Equal serene to pass. Abasa equal serene. Equal serene. Jehovah Doctor, Doctor Nadega Nego, Ibako Chedike, Abara Wajemon, Esimela, Oye na Wana Nega Nego, Ongwa ya kanti biani rugi, Sichemo, Doctor. There's somebody that is watching online. You have a problem in your kidney. God is healing you right now. Thank you, Jesus. I can hear the brush of angels wings I see glory in this place Surely for the presence of the Lord question for you. Do you believe? Church, do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe? Do you believe that the words you are about to speak now will be your next experience? Yes. 
see how that guy secured himself a scholarship slot just by activating faith. Because what God speaks to one, he speaks to all. They ran to the man. They said, your son lives. Exactly the same word Jesus spoke. Then he inquired of them the hour when he what? Got better. The man said in his mind, I know him getting better is sure. I want to know the hour he got better. And they said to him what? Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So Jesus spoke to him today. It happened tomorrow. By this time tomorrow. They said, sir, when you were in that service yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. The man looked at his clock. Look at this. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he himself believed and his whole household. So when you see God performs miracle, it means he wants a belief, not only for you, but for your whole household. There are things when people see around you, salvation will become easier to preach. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, by this time tomorrow, let God load you with everything it takes to make the gospel easier. Be on your feet everywhere. Say, by this time tomorrow. Hey, say it again. Say it by, by this time tomorrow. Touch yourself. Say, I believe the word of God. Oh, say it like me. Say, I believe the word of God. Say, and I believe the words that are about to come to my mouth. Say, I believe the word that is about to come out of my mouth. Open your mouth and begin to declare by this time tomorrow. Anything you want to see tomorrow, open your mouth and declare it. Anything you want to see tomorrow, go ahead and declare it. Anything you want to see tomorrow, go ahead, go ahead. Brekota, 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 brekota. Rekota, <laughs> Rakata 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 Rakata
Lift your two hands up with faith in your heart. Faith in your heart. Just look up to Jesus. And I join my faith with your faith. And I say amen to all those things you said. I join my faith with your faith. And I say amen to those declarations. May God exceed your expectations. The Bible said that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you may ask or think. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that by this time tomorrow, the future you will see is this one you just declare with your mouth. I don't know what is happening around you now. By this time tomorrow, let a new day emerge. Let there be a new experience. Let a sudden miracle take place. Let there be a sudden turn around. In the name of Jesus Christ of God. Lift your hands everywhere you are. I declare in the name of Jesus. Let God exceed your expectations. I declare in the name of Jesus. That your next testimonies will be the things you just declared right now. Jesus said your son lives. The people came back and said your son lives. I declare congratulations. They will tell you it has been sent. They will tell you it has dropped. I declare in the name of Jesus. They will tell you it is now going as prepared. In the name of Jesus Christ. Those papers I command it released. I command in the name of Jesus that whatsoever that is hanging be released right now. Let there be a turnaround. Let there be a testimony. So shall it be. By this time tomorrow, let a miracle take place. By this time tomorrow, let there be a change of narrative. By this time tomorrow, let there be a change of story. By this time tomorrow, let there be a change of status. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. So shall it be. In the name of Jesus. Take a seat and lay it on the altar. If you make a transfer, also make sure that you touch the altar. Kaso baradea. Zona kasa. Ezozo bares. Kasa donobosha. 